Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome to something a little bit different. I got an idea here. I figure, hey, let's do some uh, let's do some coding challenges, shall we? Haven't done some of these in a while. Uh, it's gonna be different than you know the ones I've done in the past, where I've you know put the problem up there, and then a few days later I put the solution. I'm just gonna do them on the video. So I'll start off by uh, giving you guys the problem, showing you the the explanation of it, and then if you want to try it yourself, you can just freaking pause the video or not. Doesn't matter. Uh, this will make things a lot easier and uh, to be honest a lot of people weren't submitting in the first place So it's just it's not a very good idea to do it the way I was doing it before this is gonna be much better uh, so What we're gonna be looking at here is uh, hackerrank.com It's a site where you can it allows you to code in your browser Submit your code and it gets compiled on the server and run against their test cases and they have a curated a curated selection of problems here called the interview preparation kit so you can go to this URL right here and you can check these out and these problems are nice they're um, they're about at the level of problems that you can see in actual you know coding interviews so they're not too they're not too difficult they're not too mind-bending but some of them they give a decent challenge they can showcase some interesting and useful skills so I'm just gonna be going through these guys here, coding them up on the video, talking a little bit about them, maybe explaining some things, maybe sometimes drawing diagrams, other times not. Um, let's see what we got. So in this video, I'm just gonna do a simple one. For the most part, I'm not gonna be looking at these easy ones because they are quite easy. Uh, a little bit too easy. They're not really worth your time. They, they, ain't, it, they ain't it, chief. That's what I'm trying to say. But let's look at one of them, get an idea of why. I'm not going to be doing them. No, I don't think so. Okay. So you get the problem statement here and they give you your constraints. Basically, uh, you know, the ranges of values and the size of your inputs, which is useful. Gives you a hint on, you know, what kind of time complexities you might be looking at, what kinds of problems are on the table, not problems, but solutions. Uh, here's your code. They give you, so I mean, your input format looks something like this. It's just text separated by uh, spaces and new lines and you can parse it. But they give you a test driver boilerplate that parses that for you and the boilerplate calls a, you know, a nicer function like this one here. So this is what we have to implement. So let's look at the problem here. A left rotation operation on an array shifts each of the array's elements one unit to the left. So two left shifts are performed on an array blah, and you get blah. Makes sense, right? You got this three here, you shift it two to the left, it becomes here. And all the other ones are shifted around, the one gets pushed around to the back, and it rotates through here. Okay, given an array of n integers and a number d, perform d left shift operation rotations on the array. Yeah, okay. So, it doesn't seem that hard. You just rotate to the left by D. D is between 1 and N. So you're never going to have a situation where you have zero rotations. You're never going to have multiple loops through, basically. But, I don't know. If you, if you rotate N, let's see, N is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so if D was equal to N, you'd, st you'd end up with what you started with. Size is... 10 to the 5 probably means, I mean, 10 to the 5, that means like an n squared problem or solution. Probably would time out. I don't know exactly what their limits are, but I think n squared is probably about at the threshold of timing out for this one. Of course, you don't need n squared. You don't need anything for this problem. Uh, you know me. You know who I am. Probably. Most of you do. So, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of the standard library and the algorithms in the standard library, they're often overlooked, but a lot of people don't understand them or even know what they are, how to use them. But with a problem like this, if you know the algorithms, you look at this and you uh, you chuckle to yourself in amusement because you say, okay, rotate. Yeah, we got our vector A, so we give them a range, begin and end. In the middle of the rotate, oh, this this is new. I didn't get, I didn't have this before. They got code completion. I think they updated or something. Ah, oh, this is way better. This is actually pretty sweet. Okay. So, first, 
and last give you the range uh, that that's the range you're going to rotate. And middle, you just tell it the one that you want to be at the beginning of that range. So the one that we want to be at the beginning of the range is basically just uh, the beginning plus D, right? If D were uh, four, that means that you would want this one to be at the beginning. One, two, three, four uh, shifts. So D plus one or beginning plus one, two, three, four. That's this one here. So you want your middle iterator to point to this one. That makes sense, right? Begin plus D. And then just A dot end. And there you go. You're done. You've solved the problem. Oh my God. Return A. So I mean, yeah, if you know algorithms, then you're done already. You're done pretty much before you started. And I think this uh, showcases why I'm not going to be doing too many of these uh, these beginner problems, these easy problems here. But let's run the code. You got to be freaking kidding me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. One second. All right. I've signed up. My name is Snurt. Let's, let's do this thing. Okay. So run code. It's working. Let's see if I didn't have messed something up here. Ah, okay. So this is your, you do the run code thing and it tests you against some simple sample cases and it gives you the inputs and the outputs. So if you do something wrong, you can analyze and you can see, you know, perhaps where you, uh, where you messed up. Once you run call, did this run code thing, you make sure it compiles, you make sure it passes these uh, sample test cases. Then you submit and it runs it against a whole bunch of other test cases, some of them very large. So they'll test your, uh, basically the, the runtime of your algorithm. And there you go, we've done it. We have completed the problem, hallelujah. Uh, so yeah, and I mean, in general for this problem, shifting or rotating objects, you're gonna have to touch every object in the array and you're gonna move it over by a fixed amount, uh, possibly wrapping around to the other side. That's gonna be big O of N, right? Uh, and if you look up the rotate, in, I don't know, c++.com or whatever, you'll see that the time complexity listed there is big O of n, so linear time complexity. So, there you go. That's what it looks like to solve a problem on this website. And once you've solved the problem, if I refresh here, they gotta, they gotta work on their Ajax game. You can go to editorial, and you can get the, yeah, the solution. So here is their solution, written in Java, I guess. Now, if you want to see me solve some more interesting problems like this, uh, make sure to click that like button, drive some people into the video, show me that you're actually interested, and I'll be making some more of these. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with some more coding problems.